Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Star Wars Lads. This week, we are going to be tackling the top 10 Star Wars books of all time. I'm going to be giving you my top 10 in this video, and let's dive right in. But before we get started, please hit that like button down below. It'll really help us out with the YouTube algorithm because we are on our way to 1,000 subscribers and every single one of your likes and subscriptions count. So if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. We have so much Star Wars content on here. And we will be doing so much Star Wars content in the future, as well as casting Andor and all of that other stuff that is coming out, Bad Batch, in the fall. You're going to want to stick around with Star Wars Lads for all of that great content. Also, stay tuned next week for Sonic's Top 10 Star Wars books, which will be coming out. This is a similar type of series to how we did it back in February when we did our Top 10 Star Wars stories of all time. So you're going to want to stick around for both of our opinions on this topic. So before we get started, just a couple rules that I laid for myself. One was the most obvious. I had to have read the book. So if I haven't read it, even if I know the story, I didn't put it on here. The second one was I decided not to include any novelizations, mainly because novelizations, while there are some excellent novelizations, most of them enhance a story that we already kind of knew from the films. So even if that is a better version than the films, I decided not to include it and stick to mostly original stories that were originally told in novels. And so now I'm going to get to a couple honorable mentions. This was a really tough list to make. And as I continue to even read more books that I haven't read yet, this honorable mention list will definitely continue to expand and maybe future updates to this list. But for right now, I have Brotherhood by Mike Chen, an excellent Obi-Wan and Anakin novel from The Clone Wars. Lost Stars as an honorable mention, one of the great Claudia Gray novels. The Canon Thrawn trilogy, Zahn's first attempts at Star Wars canon writing. Catalyst, a Rogue One novel, a very underrated novel by James Lucino that really helps enhance, especially the beginning of Rogue One. Master and Apprentice, also by Claudia Gray, an excellent Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon novel. Kenobi by John Jackson Miller, a really solid Western in Star Wars. And finally, Revan by Drew Karpishian, one of the best Old Republic era novels that we ever have gotten. So now without any further ado, let's get to the top 10. This is where the fun begins. The 10th spot on this list might have been the hardest one for me out of all of them. As you can probably tell by my honorable mentions, there are a lot of great Star Wars novels that I had to leave off this list that surely could have made any other top 10 list. In early drafts of this list, I had Lost Stars or Catalyst on here, and until about the final draft, Kenobi held this spot. But when I really sat down and thought about it, there was no way I could leave the Hand of Thrawn duology off my top 10. Just like Zahn's previous work on the Thrawn trilogy, the Hand of Thrawn duology is another testament to Zahn's ability to world build within the Star Wars universe. It's here that he begins his expansion of the Thrawn character, establishing more of his hidden past and exploring the mystery around the Chiss. Similarly to the Thrawn trilogy, Zahn also writes the original trilogy legacy characters brilliantly, capturing the essence of Luke, Leia, Han, Lando, and the rest of the cast so perfectly, giving these characters life and personality that nicely ages their original trilogy personas into realistic versions of their characters 15 years after Return of the Jedi. Zahn's original character work is also excellent. He not only writes characters like Mara Jade, Talon Card, and Admiral Pelion well, but new characters like Rodan Tierce, Moff Disra, Flim, and the former background character Shada Dukal all interweave wonderfully throughout this series. Zahn also exhibits a mastery of political writing in this story, with multifaceted factions in both the New Republic and the Imperial Remnant conniving their own schemes within the grander governments themselves. The duology also does an incredible job cleaning up, retconning, and unifying everything that came out in the Bantam era between Zahn's first trilogy and this series. For that Herculean task alone, this series should be praised. It's just nice that these novels are also filled with Zahn's typical brand of fascinating layered storytelling. Everyone has their favorite side of Star Wars. For me, it's always been the fantastical side surrounding the lore of the Jedi and the Sith. In novels especially, I was never quite as intrigued by the war side of the Star Wars universe, unless it concerned the main original trilogy cast. All of that changed when I started reading my pick for number 9, the X-Wing series by Michael A. Stackpole and Aaron Alston. I've been slowly making my way through this series and I haven't finished it yet, but I've been enjoying it so much though that when I do finish it, it most likely will climb up even higher on this list. Throughout the entire X-Wing series, Stackpole and Alston are consistently able to give life and depth to the New Republic and its hierarchy as well as establish likable groups of characters with a variety of personalities that continuously keep the reader engaged. As of now though, my favorite novel in the series is hands down Wedge's Gamble. The series as a whole has one of the best ensemble casts out of any Star Wars story ever. However, one of the reasons that Wedge's Gamble is my favorite so far 
is because of its tone. Stackpole crafts one of the most exciting Star Wars thrillers I've ever read, telling the story of the rogue's attempt to infiltrate and capture Coruscant for the New Republic. It's got loads of action, but the first half in particular is enriched with an undercover spy element that gripped me especially juxtaposed with the machinations of the Imperials Isan Izard and Kirtan Lore. Stackpole's characters also have some excellent moments in this one, with series staples like Corrin Horn and Wedge Antilles shining, but also featuring many wonderful moments from the supporting cast. The X-Wing series is really a special collection of novels, and with the Essential Legends collection reprints of nearly every book in the series seemingly on their way, there's no better time to dive in. A common theme you'll see on my list is an emphasis on these novels' abilities to expand the Star Wars mythology. That's why taking my number 8 spot on the list, with his second entry so far, is Timothy Zahn's newest Star Wars trilogy, the Thrawn Ascendancy Trilogy. Zahn's mastery of Star Wars worldbuilding is once again on full display here in his latest books. Using Thrawn as the touchstone, Zahn is able to craft arguably the largest galactic expansion of the Star Wars mythos ever through his deep dive into the unknown regions all told from the perspective of the officers and rulers of the Chiss Ascendancy. It's one of the only Star Wars book series to truly go beyond the stories of the beings from the core worlds and the rims, exploring into a world that has all the trappings of Star Wars but with wholly unique possibilities. The Chiss Ascendancy itself is restructured and expanded upon great from its original Legends appearances, and is heavily populated with a large range of characters both likable and despicable. Zahn also experiments and further explores many of his canon ideas as well from his other three Thrawn novels. The Skywalkers that were first mentioned in Thrawn Alliances play a large integral part in the foundation of the Chiss hierarchy and military, and with standout characters like Thrawn, Aralani, Thalias, Thurfian, Samacro, Akif, Chiri, General Yiv, and the villainous Jyxtus of the Grisks, which I can't wait to learn more about, hopefully in future novels, the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy is the perfect canon series to read for those looking for something that both embraces its Star Wars roots and has an active interest in expanding the lore. For years, we fans of Star Wars books have been begging for important storytelling for the canon at large. With the release of the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy, we finally started to get a series that did that. All we were missing was one of those classic publishing initiatives to make canon novels start to feel important again. Then in 2021, enter the High Republic. Don't worry, I'm not putting the entire publishing initiative down here in this one spot, because that would feel like a huge stretch for just one place on this list. So instead, I'm going to be listing my two favorite novels from the initiative so far, Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule and The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. The High Republic has been one of the best things to happen to Star Wars canon publishing in the last eight years. It has once again made publishing one of the key places for important lore expansions in the Star Wars universe. In my opinion, no book has built up that lore better in the initiative than Light of the Jedi. In Light of the Jedi, Charles Soule does an incredible job establishing what a Republic at the height of unity looks like with seemingly endless hope and optimism, as well as what the Jedi are like during the peak of their powers, before they become so embroiled in the conflicts and politics of the government that they can no longer see the threats right in front of their noses. With fantastic characters like Avar Chris, Elzar Mann, Bel Zedifar, Loden Greatstorm, amongst others, we really get a peek at a Jedi Order that truly embodies the ideals that are preached but rarely acted upon in the prequel era. Sol also established the main villains of the series, the chaotic Nile and their merciless leader Markeon Rowe, who has become one of my favorite villains introduced in canon. Then the Rising Storm continues everything that Sol began, cranking up the action, suspense, and stakes with an incredibly exciting pace and real consequences, while also establishing more great characters like Stellan Geos and Ty York. Both of these books are outstanding, and I can't wait for future adventures in the world that's been created during the High Republic era. As I've reiterated many times on this list, lore expansion is usually the number one thing I look for in a Star Wars book. While my pick for number six might not make shockwaves for the Star Wars lore, but it tells a wonderful and touching character-driven story in a time period that is very dear to me. If you haven't guessed it, coming in at number six is Dark Disciple by Christy Golden. Dark Disciple is a novel based on a canceled arc from The Clone Wars that was originally written by George Lucas's daughter, Katie Lucas. It's set towards the end of the Clone Wars, revolving around the two beloved characters Quinlan Voss and Asajj Ventress, as they are tasked by the Jedi Council with assassinating Count Dooku. Dark Disciple might be the most mature Star Wars story in canon thus far. It's filled with romance, loss, brushes with the dark side, and the impactful ethical decisions that come with finding your place in a chaotic galaxy where the lines between good and evil aren't clear. Dark Disciple also does a great job of digging into the core of what it means to be a Jedi, and what ideals even the most noble beings in the galaxy are willing to sacrifice for victory. Golden writes with such a strong grasp on the Clone Wars, perfectly realizing the tragic love story of Quinlan Vos and Asajj Ventress, using it as a touchstone for wartime loss. It's easily my favorite Clone Wars novel from both Legends and Canon, and if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend you give it a 
try. Sometimes Star Wars books can try to do too much. Despite taking on arguably the largest scale single book story in canon, Adam Christopher's Shadow of the Sith is able to expertly thread so many needles while still feeling completely satisfying. Call it recency bias if you will, but Shadow of the Sith was the most enthralled I've been by a Star Wars canon novel in a very long time. It's a dense, packed book, but its pace is phenomenal, filling its pages with exciting story beats and effective lore expansions. As a first-time Star Wars author, Adam Christopher smashes both his prose and his portrayals. Luke Skywalker and his adventures haven't been this compelling in a novel in over a decade. Everything that Luke does or participates in in this novel, I absolutely loved. Christopher also has an incredible grasp on writing the dark side. I said in our review of this book that if Christopher wanted to write the canon versions of Plagueis or Bane, I'd absolutely love it. He's really able to capture the fantastical horror at the root of the dark side with his work on the character Kaiza in the story as well as with the mask she's bonded to, the mask of Exum Panchard. Everything about the dark side in this story hooked me. I love the Exegol sections, the Exum Panchard flashbacks, all of Kaiza's scenes, and the situations of darkness that Christopher positions Luke into were epic moments. It makes for some of the most exciting and noble Luke moments since canon began. Let's also not forget about Christopher's excellent characterization of Rey's parents, Nathan and Miramir, which adds some significant weight to their deaths in the sequel trilogy. And finally, Lando is also wonderfully portrayed here at his most vulnerable. It's a truly special book, and given time and a reread, it could jump even higher on this list. For my fourth spot on the list, I really only need to say two words, Claudia Gray. And consistent viewers of our channel will not be surprised at all that Gray's excellent Leia novel, Bloodline, is my number four on the list. Bloodline was one of the first novels in canon to take place during the latter half of the period between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, and it blew me away when I first read it. It follows now New Republic Senator Leia Organa Solo, who's attempting to rediscover her place in the galaxy as the information finally comes to light that she was the daughter of Darth Vader. Claudia Gray is the best Leia author ever in my opinion and in this book, she's able to wonderfully capture a Leia in flux. At this point in her life, Leia has found purpose in the dream of creating and maintaining a government that will allow people to be free from tyranny. Ray's depiction of Leia slowly comes to grips with the system that she's worked her whole life to build turning on her. But with the typical Leia determination, she continues to search for a new way to serve. Bloodline also establishes the New Republic's political proceedings and governmental structure better than any of the sequel films or other sequel era material. And that truly is one of the reasons I fell in love it enhances and fleshes out the world around the sequel trilogy while adding so much needed depth to our original trilogy characters. After reading the novel, I had a much clearer picture of the context of the world during the sequel era, something I feel those films didn't explain very well. With the political thriller feel and wonderful new characters like Senator Ransom Casterfo, as well as explanations for Leia's foundation of the Resistance and her purpose in the sequels, Bloodline has always been a truly special book amongst its canon contemporaries. I mentioned earlier that my favorite side of Star Wars has always been the mythology around the Jedi and the Sith. So of course, the Darth Bane trilogy by Drew Karpishian, one of the most important pieces of Sith world building, is in my top three. There are a few Star Wars stories more important to the lore of the Sith than that of Darth Bane. Across three different novels, Karpishian is able to effectively tell the origin story of Darth Bane, the formation of the Rule of Two, the final fall of the Sith Empire at the Battle of Rusan, Bane's expansion and implementation of his philosophies, the rise of Bane's apprentice Darth Xana, and the outline of Bane's succession plan as the Sith begin their 1,000-year march towards dominance. The books are packed with expansive lore detailing the legacy and progression of the Sith better than pretty much any other material out there. The true brilliance of Karpishian's writing, though, is the nature in which he's able to endlessly fascinate the reader through the minds of Bane and Xana themselves, despite them both being distinctly despicable people. It's a very rare feat that the author is able to make his villains the protagonist of the story without alienating the reader, but there are enough foils for Bane and Xana throughout the series that provide them with significant tests, but the reader can't stop flipping the pages. Karpishian's writing pulls the best elements from high concept sci-fi, political thrillers, and horror to create a truly unique, brutal series that's wonderfully paced, incredibly intriguing, and really unlike anything else in Star Wars. If you love the dark side, this is the book trilogy for you. Legacy is something that I value very highly when it comes to Star Wars. 
and a franchise that's had such an interesting history over the last 45 years, it's always fascinating to look back at the pillars of the series that have shaped its progression. That's why second place on my list is going to Timothy Zahn's sequels to the original trilogy, the Thrawn trilogy. I've moved the series up a spot on the list since February when we did our top 10 Star Wars stories, because the more and more I explored and studied the history of Star Wars as a whole, it's incredible how almost every piece of extended material always seems to circle back to Thrawn. Although many things have changed the way we view the Star Wars mythology in the nearly 30 years since these books were initially released, they have stood the test of time because of Zahn's flawless understanding of the original trilogy makeup. His books are perfectly able to recapture the magic of the film's pitch-perfect pacing, awe, and excitement while simultaneously plotting sense arcs for all of our familiar characters. It's so rare to be able to convincingly depict versions of Luke, Leia, and Han that not only encapsulates everything we love about them, but also navigates them through situations and decisions that live up to our lofty expectations of them. You also can't talk about these books without mentioning the creation of two of the Star Wars Expanded Universe's most beloved characters in Mara Jade and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Please, Lucasfilm, bring Mara into canon sooner rather than later. Looking at the legacy of Thrawn, though, he's laid a foundation of non-Sith or Jedi lead villains that has truly shaped the way stories have been told in the franchise since. He's far more cunning than any Imperial officer we had seen before, and his cunningly ruthless nature combined with his stoic demeanor made him a nice melding of the qualities of both Palpatine and Vader, but without Force abilities. I also love the insane dark Jedi Jeruis Sabaoth. Zahn writes some of his best Force-related material when writing Sabaoth, and it's just so unique. The Thrawn trilogy is easily the most cohesive, well-plotted, and wonderfully executed book series in Star Wars history. You knew this was coming, I've reiterated it over and over again on this channel, my favorite Star Wars book of all time is Darth Plagueis, and fans of our channel won't be surprised at all that this is taking the number one spot. Why do I love Darth Plagueis by James Luceno so much? It's the prequel to the prequels, the culmination of Bane's lineage, the foundational text on Sith puppeteering and manipulation, and like Darth Bane before him, Darth Plagueis is equal parts cunning and ruthless. Yet what he lacks in physical prominence, he more than makes up for in the all-important art of manipulation. Lucino gives us an incredibly detailed look inside the mind of the Sith Lord who all but harnessed the power craved by generations of Sith Masters and Apprentices before him. We also get a brilliant, twisted origin story for Palpatine, who over the book's three parts, spanning 35 years, grows beyond his master into the perfect Sith that we see in the Skywalker saga. The early conversations between young Palpatine and Plagueis before Palpatine becomes Plagueis' apprentice are some of the best philosophical writing in all of Star Wars publishing. And while I'm a very big fan of building and fleshing out lore, I get nearly equally excited to see all of the pieces of story that were once mere threads get woven into an intricately designed final product. James Lucino does that with nearly every aspect of his story telling here. We get tons of origins, such as the origin of Darth Plagueis, Palpatine, Maul, the Clone Army, the Separatists, and more. Further expansion of younger versions of characters like Qui-Gon Jinn, Jedi Master Dooku, and Sifo Dyas, intermingling with Palpatine and Plagueis, explaining how they all became embroiled in the Sith Lord's schemes. Lucino even wonderfully justifies the inclusion of science behind the mystical power of the Force. His chapters detailing Plagueis' experiments and attempts to create life are some of my favorites. Darth Plagueis is essential reading. It cleans up so many of the plot points from the prequels that are quickly brushed over in the films, filling them with satisfying explanations and expansions. It's an absolute masterpiece, and it's my favorite Star Wars book of all time. So thank you all so much for watching my list of the top 10 Star Wars stories of all time. And also stay tuned next week for Sonic's top 10 Star Wars books of all time. That will be coming out next week. Comment below and let us know what your top 10 favorite Star Wars books of all time are. What did you think of my list? And if you haven't yet, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We are getting so close to a thousand subs and every single one of your likes and subscriptions and comments really matter. Stay tuned for all of our future and or coverage as well as the Bad Batch Season 2 when it premieres. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.